On my podcast recently, I talked to Grady Hillhouse about his video on construction myths. If you haven't seen that video, check it out over on his channel, Practical Engineering. So I thought it'd be fun to make a video about woodworking myths. Some of these myths are suggested by you in a community post last week. One of the most common myths is that you shouldn't store a hand plane on its sole. You should always store it on its side. I guess the idea is that if it rests on the blade, it'll somehow damage it or dull it. But you know what? I'm pretty sure that just using a plane as it's intended by planing wood dulls the blade faster than just idly sitting on a shelf. In fact, I think it's probably better to store a plane on its sole because the blade is less likely to bang into another tool and you don't run the risk of slicing your finger or hand on the sharp exposed blade. Maybe, just maybe, an exception might be if you're storing the plane on steel? But even then, it's just sitting there. End grain glue ups. Oh, you knew I was probably gonna bring this one up. Okay, so about a year ago, the woodworking community was just rocked by a series of experiments that Patrick Sullivan did testing the strength of end grain glue ups. He pretty definitively busted the myth that end grain joints are weak and the internet pretty much went bonkers for like a week. Most of us have always been told that gluing in grain has no strength. What he proved is that if you glue in grain to in grain, you'll actually get a strong joint, even stronger than a face grain glue up. So here's the deal, and this is why I call this the myth of a myth. There are hardly any practical uses for gluing in grain to in grain, unless you're planning on gluing a bunch of cutoffs together to make a long board, which is exactly what I did here. I mean, it's kind of cool, but it's not something anyone would do for building a project. Maybe, maybe for art? But the problem is that since his video, I've read hundreds of comments from people telling me that, well, actually, it's a myth that ingrain joints are weak. Whenever I mention that butt joints, this is a butt joint, needs reinforcement. They're conflating ingrain to ingrain to mean any joint made by gluing end grain. And I guarantee you that an end grain to face grain butt joint will simply not work. The closest I get to that is gluing 45 degree miter joints for picture frames without reinforcement, which I guess it's sort of partially end grain, maybe half, but then it's only strong enough to hang on a wall without moving it around. If it falls or if there's any stress put on that, that joint is likely going to break. You really need some sort of reinforcement. So the bottom line is that end grain to end grain is strong, but in the real world of woodworking and building, you'll likely never do that. This is a stack of dado blades. It's just a whole bunch of blades that you can stack together for cutting wide grooves or dados. I use dado blades a lot in my style of woodworking and every time I use a stack of dado blades in my table saw, I hear disappointment from my European viewers who tell me that dado blades are illegal in Europe and the UK. This is one of those myths that I've really been trying to get to the bottom of for years. It's absolutely mind-boggling how many different explanations and opinions I've read about this topic. I think one of the most concise and rational explanations recently is in a video by Steve Maskery, which he made in March of 2021. Ultimately, it seems dado blades aren't technically illegal, but for all intents and purposes, you can't use them. In a nutshell, apparently there's no specific law prohibiting them, but there are laws in place that prohibit the removal of the blade guard on a table saw. And in most saws, the blade guard is attached to the riving knife and you have to remove the riving knife in order to cut a dado. As a result, saws sold in Europe are equipped with a very short arbor that can only accept one blade at a time, so it's impossible to stack dado blades. Strangely, these regulations only apply to industrial professional settings, not home hobbyists. And I think certain professional shops can probably be properly equipped and they can use dado blades, but 
Good luck finding a saw for your garage that'll accept dado blades. Solid wood, it's the sign of quality. So this is a good one because it's a myth. I've been trying to bust on this channel for 14 years. In fact, solid wood construction can be a sign of quality, but not necessarily. One of the problems here is defining what quality means. It's a pretty subjective term. There's plenty of woodworkers who just bristle at the thought of using plywood on a project or are quite vocal about their disdain for MDF or other manufactured products. And you know what? I used to be one of those guys. I would just snobbishly turn up my nose at any laminated or painted kitchen cabinets made out of MDF. What self-respecting woodworker would build a bookcase out of sheet goods? That was back before I started making a lot of projects on a regular basis and discovered that a lot of the time, furniture made using plywood or other manufactured products can look great, last just as long, and is more stable than solid lumber. As Andy pointed out, it's a myth to assume that a piece of furniture is of higher quality simply because it's so much more expensive. An ebony nightstand, for instance, is expensive because of the scarcity of that exotic wood, not necessarily because it's better. So hold your head high and build projects using whatever materials you like. There's certainly no shortage of woodworking myths. Let me know if you like this topic and I'll make another myth video. Also, let me know of any myths you'd like to see included. Quick reminder, if you've been looking for a step-by-step -step approach to learning woodworking from the ground up, there is no better place to start than The Weekend Woodworker. And if you're wondering how you're gonna get all the tools you need, I have a free guide I want you to download showing you how you can get all the tools you need for less than $1,000. Head over to mytoollist.com and download it today.